Hi, today I'll be talking about junior rackets. I'll share with you some guidelines and progressions, some do's and don'ts, and tips to consider when upgrading to a new racket. All right, let's go inside. All right, so let's first talk about the various lengths that junior rackets come in, typically between 21 and 26 inches. So if a child is first starting, usually at ages four through six, you're looking at a 21 inch length racket. The grip sizes on all of these rackets are standard, so we're not gonna talk about grip size, but it's mainly the length. And this would be a red ball player. So this is gonna be played on a 36 foot uh, length uh, court, which is the, the width of a regulation court. Now, if the child is a little bit stronger and taller, then a red ball player of that age could actually use a 23 inch racket uh, for a red ball. And that would be fine. And the way to measure it is to have the child hold the racket uh, in their forehand grip. And what you wanna do is have their arm at the side of the body, and I'll provide a picture, and position it to the outside of their leg. And then if the racket touches the ground, then you know the length of the racket is too long. So you can measure it that way. So as long as it has clearance um, by holding it that way. Now, typically a 23 inch racket will be uh, for a six to eight year old player. And at that point, they'll probably be playing with an orange ball. And that would be on a 60 foot court, which is uh, 18 feet shorter than a regulation court. So some tennis courts have those special lines in the courts. Uh, so that would be a uh, 23 inch. And going up to the next, uh, length would be a 25 inch racket uh, something like this and again this could be for an orange or it could be for the uh, a green ball player and this would be ages eight through nine generally and when they transition to a green ball then they're playing on the full court which is 78 feet and that's the regulation court and uh, also I mentioned that if the child is a little bit stronger and taller by measuring it they could actually use a 26 inch racket with a green ball. And uh, again, it depends on the child. They could even use an adult racket at that point when they're using the green ball. Now the difference in the balls, if you take a look at all three of them, oh, the other one ran away. If you start with the uh, red ball, it's a little bit bigger than the other, other two if you can see that. And this one's at 25% compression. Then when you go to an orange ball, it's at 50%. And then a green ball is at 75%. So it does get a little bit harder um, and bounces a little higher as you go up in each level. Now there is a 17 inch and 19 inch rackets. I don't have the 19 inch rackets uh, here in stock, but I have this little guy <laughs> this 17 inch racket so cute and they actually have foam balls so if you have a two or three year old and you want to get them started earlier they do have uh, smaller racket options all right so next i wanted to talk about some do's and don'ts with uh, junior rackets so the first uh, do is uh, what i just mentioned was making sure that the length of the racket is appropriate for the child and as the child becomes uh, taller and stronger, then you can progress to the next uh, length racket. What you don't want to do is have them play with one of your uh, old rackets. And even though it might be a really light racket, uh, you don't want your child to play, be playing with a 27 inch racket right from the start. So uh, you want them to make, you want to make sure that they're learning properly with the right equipment. Uh, the second do is uh, I generally don't restring junior rackets because they'll outgrow the racket in 12 to maybe 18 months. But you'll find that some cheaper junior rackets like this one, for example, doesn't have a bumper guard. So it can typically wear out um, the string at the top. And you'll find that a lot of them actually wear them right at 12 o'clock because they end up like dragging it on the ground or using it as a cane. So. Uh, in this case, this one doesn't have a bumper guard. Uh, some of these other junior rackets do, so they will tend to last uh, pretty much the life of the racket while the child is still using that racket. 
until they're ready to move to the next uh, to the next uh, length racket. But if you do have to string or restring the racket, don't string it with polyester strings. So uh, do string it with synthetic, but don't string it with polyester because it's it's just not the right setup for that uh, child in their development. Uh, the third thing is to use over grips, but not to over wrap it on a grip. And what I mean by that is um, I'll see some rackets sometimes wrapped by parents of these young kids and you know as the grip gets worn well this one's not worn but let's say if a grip was really worn out and it was like this they'll just typically get an over grip and just wrap it over and uh, sometimes there'll be maybe a couple layers and then the grip will be really uh, large uh, what I do instead though is I use the over grip as a way to wrap grips but not in the way that um, it goes over the existing grip. So I have a racket here that I already took off the uh, replacement grip. And what I like to do is actually use one over grip and double layer it. So what I'm doing in, um, in the end is wrapping it as if I'm using two over grips. And this is a cheap way to uh, keep your grips uh, in my case, I have all the rackets that the kids use uh, when they don't have rackets here, but I replace it with over grips instead of replacement grips. So it's a lot cheaper, as you know, to do it that way. So basically what I'm doing is I'm overlapping uh, each, uh, each wrap so that it's actually two layers. So when I'm overlapping it, it's, it's about half the width of the over grip, which is about and half inch overlap. So when I'm done with the uh, wrapping the entire racket, uh, it'll be double layered. So uh, maybe you can see some of that here. You can see that the overlap is actually matching up with um, making it into a double layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this racket and then uh, trim it and show it to you so you can see it. But uh, I find this is a nice uh, way to replace your grips without having to get a replacement grip every time. And uh, it'll actually make it one size smaller by doing it this way because two layers of over grip is, a, is, um, is thinner than a, an actual replacement grip. So it's a nice way to um, make sure that the grips are not gonna be very uh, large. So I'm at the end right here, and typically I'm gonna trim it by using the scissors, and I'll just make a mark so I know where to uh, line up my cut. And it's just gonna um, make it nice and even at the top of the handle. And you can get these over grips in bulk, and. Uh, just keep some so you can just wrap them as needed but um, Yeah, I find this is a an easy and cheap way to maintain your uh, Grips especially in my case since I have a lot of these rackets lying around for kids to use so definitely uh, Use an over grip, but not to over wrap it on an existing replacement grip but you can use this method to uh, maintain your rackets and um, keep the grip size um, so it's not building it up. All right, so you can see that the overlap actually looks like it's just a regular grip because you can't see where it's overlapped because I just matched up the edges to the, uh, where it was overlapping if that makes any sense. So now your child is about nine or 10 years old and has been playing with the 26 inch racket for about a year and is ready to move to an adult size 27 inch length racket. So there are rackets that are under nine ounces, which would be good for that age. But typically I find that a lot of my juniors will switch to an adult racket when they're about 11 or 12. And at that point, they're usually ready for a 9.5 ounce racket. And these are these weights are unstrung. And um, 
And then from there, they'll progress. And I'll talk more about the uh, progression in weight as the child gets older. But I did want to talk about four things that um, uh, guidelines when upgrading to an adult racket. So I just talked about the weight. Uh, the second thing is a head size. And I would try to stick within a 98 to 105 head size. Typically, the 100 square inch is the most common. So uh, that would be my recommendation. What I wouldn't recommend is a racket with a head size that's 107 or larger, especially if it's one of your old rackets, which happens to be lying around. Uh, the reason for that is that um, a head size like this will tend to make it easy for the child to get, uh, get away with off-center hits that they normally wouldn't be able to pull off with a smaller head size. So, um, that can sometimes lead to lazy footwork and positioning. And having a head size like this will help reinforce proper stroke mechanics and, and their footwork. So um, yeah, you wanna make sure that they're using the appropriate equipment and not something that you just happen to have lying around. Um, the next area is the grip. Uh, you wanna make sure that the grip size is appropriate. So. There's different ways of measuring a grip size. There's some people that use the uh, the finger technique where they'll wrap it and measure with the finger. I like to use a ruler. And so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, measure my hand using the ruler, placing it in the palm of my hand. And what you have to look for is the second lateral line. So in my case, it's, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's this line right there. And I'm gonna go up to the top of my ring finger and for some people's hands, it's hard to see that line. So then I'll do it on their other hand. But uh, my measure is at four and a half. Uh, but I don't use a four and a half grip size. In fact, I, I use a four and a quarter and I wrap it with an overgrip. So it's somewhere between a quarter and three eighths. And typically uh, players, I think it's better to have a smaller grip size and by having the smaller grip size, you have the flexibility of adding overgrip if you wanted to make it bigger. So, uh, and the reason for that is to facilitate the uh, uh, racket hit speed and being able to uh, be able to come around faster on your forehands and your serves. All right, so the next area I wanted to talk about is stringing, but uh, I, I did another video that actually talks about that. So I'll provide a link in the description below. Before I get into when it's time to upgrade a racket, you wanna make sure that your current racket is gonna last as long as you can make it last. So there's four things that you should keep in mind uh, as far as basic racket care. One, you don't wanna keep your racket, um, you wanna avoid keeping your racket in your car, uh, especially on a hot sunny day. Uh, if you have to leave your racket in your car, uh, you should try and find a shady spot where you can park and maybe crack the window open to avoid baking your racket. Uh, the high temperatures can affect the integrity of the frame and can definitely cause uh, string tension loss. The second thing is you want to make sure that you're replacing your bumper and grommet strips periodically to prolong the life of your racket, especially at the, the top where a lot of the wear will happen at the bumper guard. You never want the racket to uh, start uh, showing its graphite fibers and um, the inside of the frame. The third area is you wanna make sure you're maintaining your grip. So having over grips, uh, I think is the best way because you can replace it more often. And uh, you wanna make sure that you do that before it starts to blister and you can see the underneath, uh, the white layer underneath. Um, but yeah, having your racket slip in your hand can compromise the control and can cause more stress in your arm also. And the fourth area of basic racket care is of course to have your racket restrung periodically. In a previous video titled Stringing Guidelines, I provide more details and uh, you can check it out in the description down below. When you consider a racket, as soon as it comes off of the machine, it's actually losing tension. And over time, it'll continue to lose more tension and resilience, and eventually it can negatively impact the performance and the feel of the racket.
All right, so let's say that now your young player, junior player, is now a junior high school player. And uh, there's three player types, and depending on their, their type, will depend if they need to upgrade to another adult racket. So the first type is the recreational player. Now this one I feel like uh, probably doesn't need to upgrade a racket because they play just for fun basically and they're not competing at any kind of uh, competitive type level. Uh, the second is the seasonal competitor and for this type of player it would be maybe a, a high school player that does only play high school season or maybe a JTT, but only really plays like once or maybe twice a year when season when tennis season is uh, happening. And for that type of player, you probably need an upgrade probably once throughout their high school uh, career. And I'll get more into that uh, and why that would be the case. And then the third is the all year competitor. So this would be your high performance tournament league uh, type player and they, that type of player might need uh, a couple upgrades during their high school career. All right, so now that your junior player is entering high school and uh, they already have an adult racket and uh, let's say if they start off with a 9.5 or maybe a 10 ounce racket and uh, if they're the recreational player Earlier I mentioned they don't need to upgrade, but let's say if they're like a seasonal player that plays during the high school season or maybe plays JTT and um, as they train and as they grow and get bigger and um, physically stronger, you might want to consider going to a heavier frame. You could be, it could be the same model, but just go to a heavier, a heavier model. And the general rule is you want to use the heaviest racket that the player can swing without getting tired. Uh, it does allow for um, the racket to do a little bit more work and not get it pushed around. And what I mean by that is that uh, a heavier racket will actually absorb more shock, uh, especially when you're hitting harder balls coming at you. Uh, it'll be more stable because you got more weight behind it and you get more plow through because with more weight, as you make contact, the racket won't tend to slow down. It'll, you know, keep it at the same speed. So uh, having a heavier racket is always a benefit if you can swing it. Now for the all year around uh, competitor, uh, they might, uh, as I mentioned, you might need two upgrades. Uh, the first is to go to something heavier, but then after a couple of years, that player might consider going to either something even heavier in swing weight, which means that there's more weight at the head, which allows a little bit more stability and, um, and plow through. And, um, or uh, maybe switching to a racket that has a denser string pattern. So um, let's say if they started off with an open string pattern, like a 1619 or a 1618, um, a denser string pattern would be with more strings, like an 1820. Well, you can't tell on this, but it does have 1820 um, a string pattern. So the benefit of an 1820 is that it'll provide more control. Uh, the strings will tend to last longer, so that's good, especially for a string breaker. Uh, the only downside is that it's a little bit harder to produce spin, and it has a little bit uh, stiffer or boardier feel. So. Uh, if you don't mind that, then um, that might not be a bad thing. So for an all year round player, oh, the other thing too is for the all around year all year round player, uh, those type of players tend to string rackets very often. In fact, if you're stringing about uh, uh, 25 times in about or two years, I would say that that would be a good time to replace the racket. So that's kind of a general rule that I go by, it's either two years or 25 string jobs. I did wanna share one final tip to consider before upgrading to a new racket. What you could do is take your current racket and customize it. So you can either check with your stringer or if you need to find a USRSA certified stringer or master racket technician or possibly an IART stringer in your area, I'll provide the link below. But the stringer could help you with customizing your frame by adding lead to the uh, head part of the racket to in increase the swing weight. 
or possibly adding weight to the handle by injecting silicone or using lead tape. And, um, but if you're one of those that want to do it yourself, I also did some videos on how to do that. So I'll provide the links below. So hopefully that'll help. Thanks for watching. Play with Aloha. And let your strings play.